Good morning, friends. All right, so today's craft. Hmm. This is something I was thinking about for a couple of days, and I had this metal pig, uh, and I had this sign, I think it's from Hobby Lobby, from like a year ago I might have bought this. Um, and I'm thinking about doing some, uh, like a farmhouse look. Something farmhouse. I have all my colors together. Um, I'm going to do the red gingham check, the black gingham check, both with the uh, tan and, you know, just some stuff. I have some ideas. I might switch it around a little bit, but for the most part, I think that is, uh, I think I've got it for once. I know that's weird for me, right? <laughs> so what I'm going to do first actually is stain this outside wood with my antique wax from Waverly. And I usually just use like a baby wipe with this. Usually goes on pretty easy. I have to keep my eye, my ear out for the uh, timer. I have uh, bread in the oven. I've just about finished baking for the shop today. If you didn't know, I, I also make baked goods for our shop. It's not just uh, home decor. Alright, that's done. So, what I'm going to do now is um, paint this inside. Nope, I got the wrong color. Hold on. Paint the inside black. And then um, I'm going to do the crackle finish over it. So if anybody has been waiting to see how that's done, I'm about to do it. All right, it's all black. I'm only doing one coat because this is going to be a um, crackle finish. So you don't need more than one coat on your base. I've never had that issue. So I don't have any, um, like, school glue. I had a giant thing of it. Lost it when I moved. I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to use the Mod Podge. And this, this stuff is on its last leg. <laughs> now you take whatever color you're going to use as a top color. And you want to put it over this, but not, um, you don't want to work it in. You just, you, the least, the less you mess with it, the better. All right, so I'm going to try and do this fast. I got to get more of this paint. I'm almost out. So I'm just going to put it on. Try to get it in just a stroke or two without really overworking it. I'm going to have to come in and do these edges. I thought about doing a, uh, can already see it starting to work. I thought about maybe putting something on the edges of this. Could do beads, could do um, rope. We'll see what happens. I just like how it gives it a finished look. Alright, it's a good thing I'm going into town tomorrow because I need more of this paint, definitely. I use this color probably more than any other color, and it shows. Alright, so obviously the temptation is to do what I'm doing right now, and, and the only reason I'm doing that is I'm just fixing my brush mark where it stopped. I don't want that to show, so now we take the blow dryer and hope it works. Look at that, you guys. How cool is that? Happens right before your eyes. <clears throat> That's a good crackle. That's a very good crackle. I'm pretty happy with that. Now my pig is going to go here. See how cool that is? But this guy's got to get painted. So I am going to do the ivory stripe in the middle, black on both sides. Just going to use my same paintbrush here. Just going to guess, really, where to put it. Again, using chalk paint. This is metal, it'll stick pretty good. And I don't want this perfect. This is uh, gonna get distressed and a little blended. So I'm gonna dry this first because uh, I don't want it to like fully blend. I don't want like my black to turn white <laughs> or gray. All right, so now I'm gonna do the black. And it's gonna be both here and here. Be 
getting pigs again next year. Well, this year, I should say, but more in the uh, springtime. We've probably raised 10 pigs now over the past, like, four, five years, four years that we started. They're very cute when they're little, <clears throat> when they're piglets. But boy, as they get older, a pig is not a stupid animal. I think that's a misconception a lot of people have. Pigs are very smart. They will figure out if they can get out. They will. They will figure out a way. I've had it happen a few times. All right, Mr. Piggy is good. And uh, I am going to now distress him. So this is kind of working. This one, like I said, is not um, going to have a whole lot in it. So I'm just going to rub over it. I'm, I'm using this because it's gentle. So I don't scratch up the paint. Just kind of want it. But see, these edges, I need more defined. That's just not enough for me. And so what I'm going to do is, this is working great for this middle part. What I'm going to do is go ahead and get my um, antique wax here and, and use it to do a little bit more on those edges. You guys know. It wouldn't be me if I wasn't distressing something, right? <laughs> and it's okay if it gets on the black. I'm fine with that. I'm just going to use my finger, kind of dab, so you can see how it's getting in there, more defined. That looks so much better to me. What do you guys think? Do you like it better the other way? Just like minimal, or even keeping it without distressing? Or do you prefer the distressing? I mean, you already know my answer. <laughs> All right, bread's in the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, on the edges, distress a little bit. Doesn't take much, this is metal. Just like points of the ears, the nose, just all over really. And again, I don't want this to be uniform, I don't want it to be just a white line that goes all the way across. I want to just put it, do it sporadically. I'm even going to go on the black right next to the white line here. Just sporadically, just giving me a little bit of definition here. Alright, so now <clears throat> I'm going to bring it in a little bit. Not, I don't want to go crazy, guys. I'm not looking for full... You can see the, the bumps are the ones that are coming out here. And I don't want to get them all. So this guy is going to go here. I'm thinking, actually, though, with... So I need to distress this still a little bit, but this is like showing up white. And I know it's like a tiny detail that most people probably wouldn't notice, but I notice. So I keep doing that, I'm taking away the thing. So uh, I'm just going to barely go over it with my antique wax. Let's see if that makes a difference for muting it down a little. Well, it does. Yeah, it definitely does. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to mute it a little bit. I'm not covering it up. You can see, you can still see it, but it's it's not so bright white. I just think that is so much better. Can, I don't know if you guys can see. Can you see the difference? This is just the white coming out underneath. This is with the antique wax over it. I can 100% see the difference. And it's so much better with the wax on it. All right, friends, you can see. Definitely dulled down. I love it. Much, much better. That's the white. Okay, so now I am going to go over it real quick with a coat of Mod Podge just to seal it in. And then I have more things for this little piggy. 
All right, so while this guy is drying fully, I'm gonna go ahead and start um, distressing the sign. So we did this crackle finish, so now I wanna distress a little bit, kind of take off that white. Underneath this is black. Just kind of using my ink pad to go into these grooves a little bit. Okay, so we're going to get in the corners. Alrighty friends, I think the glue gun is now hot enough. I'm just going to give this a fresh edge. Okay, finger protector. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put, this is thick rope, so I'm going to put a good amount of glue in here. I don't want it to leak out, so I'm not going that crazy with the glue, but I do want it to be able to hold it really well. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually stamp the word on here to see if I want this here. And then I also did a tag somewhere over here. So we're going to go with the word suey, which is how you would uh, call a pig. I'm going to get the correct spelling. S-O-O-I-E. Let's go with... I haven't used, I don't think, any of my capital letters yet. Let's try it. S. So I'm going to go with S O S O O I E. I'm going to double up on this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stamp the tag, which is here. So this one I'm going to do um, farm, I think I'll do farm life. How about that? We'll do all lowercase. Alright guys, farm life. So what I'm going to do is, um, while I'm here and I have this, I'm going to crinkle this up and just make it look old. And then go ahead in and distress. Okay, so now my thought is to put some fabric around the neck. So I did already pre-rip this, just in the interest of time. Just rip them into strips however thick you want. And I'm using all of these because I'm, I'm using these colors throughout. All right, so obviously this is not long enough to make a full bow because I'm not trying to make a full bow with this. I'm gonna go ahead and make the um, messy bow that I make and put that here with the, this tying it on top. So you guys probably should know the drill by now with, with the messy bow. Uh, again though, if not, the video is right on uh, here on YouTube. So I went ahead and threaded my button like I always do. I actually saw somebody else on Facebook today with their button thread. It's the first time I've seen anybody else do it. I just think it looks good. It gives it a nice finished look. I just glue the back. It's just so it doesn't pop up. Alrighty. And then so what I need to do now is distress this whole thing, including the button. And just kind of put it on the button and rub it around. And then this, I'm going to go in and distress as well. And then I will finish up with a little bit of trimming. Eh, hey, look at that. That would be cute, right? On his butt. I'm wondering, though, with the black on black, 
you, you don't see it very well. I'm wondering if I should throw some red in there. Maybe I can do like little patches of red, not not even like a full thing. See, and I thought I had this whole thing figured out beforehand. <laughs> I'm telling you. I like to make things difficult for myself, apparently. I'm going to go over these, though, and distress them once they're attached. All right, so let's attach that side and then this side. And then we'll do these little guys. So this is just going to be like a little dab of glue. Alright, so now let's take the glue, I mean the ink pad, and just go over this red. Take the newness off. Okay, I'm going to add some twine real quick to the back here as a hanger so that um, this can be hung. I'd rather do that right now. Um, and I have beads I'm going to put on here, so I'm going to just tie this in a knot. That's why I'm using the thinner twine, so I can put the beads. And I'm going to staple this on. So I put the knot so it doesn't come through. Then you can tie it right around the stapler. So first thing that I have to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach this pig. So I'm going to use E6000 and hot glue. So as always, the E6000 is the permanent fix, you know, adhesive. Um, but I will put hot glue just for tacking it down to begin with. Just holds it there until the E6000 dries. I can do it on the tail. So again, this is just a temporary hold until the E6000 um, dries. Now, I'm going to do this without touching it all. Push down for the hot glue. I don't know. Could put that in there. It's my tea. Or it was. It's got a bunch of stuff in it now. <laughs> this happens all the time. I bring a tea in and then I end up getting fuzzies in it and, and everything. So, Alright, so first things first. I'm going to trim this a little bit. And then we can glue this on. It is hanging over a little and I'm okay with that. It's almost like a little black. And then, so we're just going to add a little bit of glue. This is burlap, it will come through, so you're going to want to protect yourself from the glue. It's hot. Alright. Same deal. Don't want to get burnt. Alrighty. So now we have the last piece, which is suey. Alright, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. What do you guys think? I just added this up here just for some interest, some extra visual interest. Um, but I like it. This will be available, it's available in my shop or on my Etsy shop if you're not able to get to the shop here. Um, and again, if you are liking what you're seeing, please subscribe and um, follow on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube and click that little bell so that whenever I post, which is pretty often, um, you'll get all the notifications for that. Alright, so you guys have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video.